This video is a continuation of our series on muscle tissue. And as you remember, our muscle tissue shares some generalized characteristics. One of those being excitability, meaning that we can stimulate our muscles and then get a response out of our muscles. Another of those characteristics being contraction. Then we have extensibility, which means that our muscles are able to be stretched. As well as being able to stretch, our muscles are able to return to their original length, which we call elasticity. And I went a little bit out of order because going along with excitability, um, our muscles are able to conduct electrical signals, so they have conductibility. When we look at muscle tissue, we have to remember that muscle tissue is highly cellular and also generally highly vascular. Now that we remember those unifying characteristics of muscle tissue, let's take a look at smooth muscle, which is this solid wall of muscle that we see here in our nice patchwork quilt that we've got going on in that picture. When we look at smooth muscle, we see a solid wall of pink. We're just looking at all of those cells and all of those cells look pink. Sometimes smooth muscle is fairly mesmerizing because if you focus up and down, and we'll see this in a, in a couple of pictures later, when you focus up and down, the outside of our smooth muscle is going to sort of come in and out of focus. And we're going to see nice fusiform cells with one centrally located nucleus. What you will not see are striations because the inside of our smooth muscle has a very different structure than our skeletal or cardiac muscle. So we've got these short little cells. You can see a couple of our nuclei here. Our cells are fusiform in structure around a centrally located nucleus. And we're not seeing um, very dark nuclei our nuclei are going to kind of be see-through, which you can see when you look at these nuclei down here, you can kind of see through them. So now we have a general description of what we're looking at. Let's get to some details. So our smooth muscle is found in the walls of many of our hollow organs. Beginning in our esophagus, Moving down to our stomach, our small intestines and our large intestines have smooth muscle. Our blood vessels have smooth muscle in their walls. Our urinary bladder has smooth muscle in its walls. So if you think of many of our hollow organs, we're going to see smooth muscle there. Another great place to see smooth muscle is in our skin, in our erector pili muscles. These are the muscles that are attached to your hairs and when they are stimulated they cause your hairs to stand erect giving you goosebumps. So in these areas very frequently our smooth muscle is going to act to move fluid or move substances through our hollow organs. So if we think about our digestive tract we're moving food through our digestive tract or if we think about our blood vessels, we are moving blood through our blood vessels, or in the case of our urinary bladder, we are going to be expelling uh, urine from our body with the contraction of that muscle. If we think about our erector pili muscles, well, it causes our hair to stand erect, giving us goosebumps. So those are some good functions for our smooth muscle. So here are all of the things that we just summarized together and we can see that our nuclei are being pointed out by those blue arrows and that they are quite transparent and that's important when you're trying to make the distinction between smooth muscle and dense regular connective tissue proper which we will do in just a few minutes in our video. But now let's take a look at another picture of smooth muscle. I mentioned that smooth muscle can be a little bit mesmerizing. 
Here is a good picture where we have that sort of mesmerizing effect. So we can see these long bands of muscle that are made by our fusiform cells. And so if we're going to see a single cell, we can take a look at one here where it's long cell, it's very skinny. We can see another cell here and they're making that spindle shape or that almond shape which is characteristic of our fusiform cells. Here's another example and in this picture you can really see our cell shape fairly distinctly in many different places. So we can see our cells are going to sort of overlap each other but they have that nice fusiform shape to them. You can see in all three of these pictures that our nuclei are not very darkly stained and if we use our fine focus we can focus through our nuclei and see through the nucleus. This is very important in the distinction between smooth muscle and dense regular connective tissue proper. And here's one more picture where we can see that our tissue is very dense. We've got a lot of cells going on here, not a whole lot of white space, and our nuclei are see-through. We can see through them. They're not so darkly purple that they're opaque, and instead you can see right through them. Now this slide is going to show us our four different smooth muscle slides. So I wrote that sideways, but all four of those guys are smooth muscle. And then these two here, these are examples of dense regular CT proper. And you can see they look very similar. However, we do have some differences especially if you look in these two pictures here. Our nuclei are very scattered throughout our entire tissue. They're all over the place and you can see through them. However, if you look in our dense regular CT proper, you can see that our nuclei tend to appear in lines so they line up with each other. You can see that really well in the bottom picture where we have nuclei in lines going all the way down our tissue. And these nuclei are not see-through. So in dense regular CT proper, our nuclei are so dark that we cannot see through them. They are dark blotches and even if we change our focus, we cannot see through our nuclei. We can also see that there is white space, so there are gaps in our dense regular CT proper where we do not see white space in our smooth muscle. So here again, we've got a close-up view of our dense regular CT proper where we can really see our nuclei very well they tend to appear in lines, so we see these nuclei spread out through that line, and the nuclei are very dense, so you can't see through them. They both have that sort of mesmerizing quality, but when you focus up and down on smooth muscle, you are going to see each of these cells come in and out of view. Whereas if you focus up and down on dense regular CT proper, it just gets fuzzy. So nothing new comes into view, it just goes out of focus. So that sums up smooth muscle and I hope that I helped you compare smooth muscle to dense regular CT proper so that you don't get them confused. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask your instructor.